Meave's ears caught the sound of a ruckus coming from the camp. Feet! Inglet! A pox upon you all! It was her quartermaster hurling oaths at the peasants she had freed from the Nilfgaardian slave convoy. A few had stolen supplies under the cover of darkness and escaped into the woods. Terror and dread gripped the other freed prisoners. Meave mulled over what to do with them, and Reynard, as always, offered some advice. Tis high time they went off on their own, Your Grace. They are too great a hindrance. They slow our march, divert our soldiers from more important tasks. And now this. Gascon was listening to their conversation. Meave shot him a questioning look. I opposed taking them in. So, for consistency, I now oppose forcing them to leave. We made their miserable lives our responsibility, did we not? Well then, that is a burden we cannot simply shrug off. Let us not mince words. We cast off these peasants now, they shall die. Meave said in the end. Let them stay. But I want them watched. They cause any more trouble, military justice they shall face. Understood? The freed prisoners sighed with relief. The infantrymen assigned to watch over them, however, grumbled their disapproval of the Queen's decision. It is an army, not a shelter, they said. Meave's ears surely caught the complaint. But the Queen had never let the opinions of others guide her in such matters, trusting only her own judgment. Not liking the looks of this, Gascon said, furrowing his brow. Meave followed his gaze. Before them, beside the road, stood a hut with a scorched thatch roof. Why? Huts abandoned, yet dried fruit and mushrooms hang from the eaves. Famine raging all around and no one's been tempted. I'd send a scout if I were you. The Queen did as Gascon suggested and sent three infantrymen to reconnoitre. They entered the hut and found only silence that was soon broken by a blood-curdling growl. The soldiers ran out at full speed, tripping over their own legs. Meave drew her sword, convinced a horde of neckers or ghouls would soon attack. But her fears proved unfounded. Instead of monsters, out of the hut came a shaggy dog, a torn scrap of fabric clutched in its teeth. Uh, Milady, one of the soldiers began, his face red with embarrassment and his hands covering a hole in his breeches. Uh, was dark as a well inside, and that hound, it, it jumped out at us all of a sudden, biting it and snapping. <laughs> Bad boy, Gascon said with a smile, then pulled a hunk of dried sausage from his bag. Bought by this generous offering, the dog calmed down at once. Further examination showed the dog was the hut's only resident. Like many others in Edirne, its owners had disappeared without a trace. Their loyal mutt still guarded the premises, waiting for his master's return. Let's take him with us, Gascon said. Otherwise, he'll die here of his own hunger or someone else's. A watchful sentry like this could prove useful in our camp, said the Queen. Fine, he can join, but he shall need a name. How about Reynard? proposed Gascon, a cheeky grin smeared across his face. That way he'll come when you call, sit on command and always be a heel. <clears throat> always heel, that is. Watch your words, said Reynard, hand tightly gripping the hilt of his sword. Or you'll learn I'm not at all as tame as you believe. Enough, both of you. That's an order. As for you... The Queen took a good look at the dog, who still had a scrap of fabric in his teeth. Since it seems you have a taste for the cloth of the nether regions, I dub you... Knickers. Will that do? The dog wagged its tail vigorously, as if thoroughly pleased with its new name. Neve's company marched off, a furry new recruit richer.
This could hurt. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. I'm gonna need um, three buckets of nails and a tub full of pegs. Don't worry yourself, your grace. We'll get her done in no time.
Life had me flowed, now here I'm marching proud. Pissing in the mort? Oh, you're dead. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. It's going to be a right good levy, big and beautiful. Stop your yapping and start digging. Life had me flowed, now here I'm marching proud. Neve and her companions neared the Moulderwood, a dense, ancient forest of trees whose tangled branches had witnessed the conjunction of the spheres. It was not until King Vidamont's day that a road was finally carved through the primeval thicket, significantly shortening the journey from Rosberg to Aldersburg. Even when peace reigns, danger rules this road, Rayla said. Now, now no one dares travel it. At the edge of the wood by the road stood an enormous willow, its branches swept down to cover its trunk, looking for all the world like long tresses shrouding a woman's face. Neve had an ill premonition. She did not like the sickly sweet aroma wafting from this tree, nor the metallic buzzing of insect wings. She sent a scout to investigate. He drew aside the drooping branches and stumbled back. There were men bound to the tree, covered in sap oozing from gashes in its trunk. Its heavy scent had attracted swarms of insects, flies, wasps, bees and beetles. They seethed over the bound men, crawling in and out of their ears and nostrils. Eldane welcomes us to his wood, Rayla whispered. Meave stepped towards the tree and saw the men stuck to it were all still alive. Those the elves had caught recently writhed and howled for rescue. Those hanging longer merely followed the queen with half-crazed, bloodshot eyes. Well, are you to stand there all day? Neve screamed to her dumbstruck Lyrians. Free them, at once! Her soldiers needed no more prompting and set about sawing at the ropes with their blades. As soon as they had freed the first captive, before even a word of thanks could be uttered, a flaming streak soared through the air and stuck in the tree. 
The oozing resin burst into flames, engulfing the prisoners as well as the soldiers who had come to their aid. Elder speech battle cries rang out from the woods as elven warriors launched their attack. Nilkansia! It's a trap! cried Reynard. Defend the Queen! to blind us with shock and awe. This could hurt. Me, the one they came best. shall tread on us! Is on! Bigger they are, easier they are to target. about slings, they hide well. Dance of death! Ha! Ha! Storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Everything all right? Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. This is Elven Land, Duan, upon which your kind dies. Don't let them regroup! Finish off the wounded! 
The battle done, Meave surveyed the carnage, her breath still ragged. The thick stench of blood, sap and ash she sucked in made her stomach churn and head swoon. The Scoyotel. I'd heard of their cruelty, but... The Queen said, sheathing her sword. But I... Never have I countenanced a thing like this. Black Rayla, who had just extracted her blade from between an elven gorilla's ribs, smiled darkly. Worst is yet to come, my lady. The Queen regrouped her forces and marched into the Moulderwood. The Lyrians sang none of their usual marching songs. Instead, they walked in silence, eyes darting constantly to their flanks. Hear that? Nightingales. Unmindful of war, they sing on. Those are no birds, my lady. Just Scoitel scouts use animal cries to communicate. Tell the men to hold to the road, my lady. Anyone wanders in the trees, they don't come out.
one bolt all I need. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. Give me a target. Abolista, your command. I'm a one second. Enough, Chicha. Draw your weapon. Me, Duan Vicamist. <laughs> you mad? Don't say that! This could hurt. The chase is on! Special prize, just for you, love. Let 
shall sing the song of steel. Shall not fail. shall tread on us. Now we will see who is weak. Yeah. Oh, so then, no other way. Her Majesty is exceptional. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Your vet will avenge us, Dwan! the white of an eye from half a league away.
The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Everything all right? Nothing personal, I assure you. On the edge of the Moldawood, there stood a small village, Crumhorn. The hamlet was surrounded by a high palisade, while the villagers carried makeshift weapons, flails, axes, and nail-studded planks. Life as the Scoyatel's neighbors was clearly not easy. While her men rested, Meave approached two of the villagers. They lowered their heads in respect and fidgeted nervously with their shirt hems. My lady, reckon you ought to know. Elves meeting traders in the woods at night. Buy swords, herbs. Rayla, who had overheard the conversation, twisted her mouth in a hateful scowl. Hawkers stink worse than vermin. Willing to help murderers for coin. Please, milady, we must find them and punish them. You, talk. Where do these meetings take place? The peasants looked at each other. One scratched his head, the other towed the sand. Finally, one of them blurted out, Could tell you, my lady, yes, but uh, only for gold. I see I'm dealing with shrewd men of trade. Fine. Your fee. Neve took a few coins from her pouch and tossed them on the ground. The peasants dropped on all fours and started snatching the coins from the grass, ignoring the contemptuous gaze of the Queen's soldiers. Them orcas wheel them goods to the old fishing hut north a year. Scoyatel come a crawling from the woods, the first crow of the cockerel. The queen told her men to prepare to fight the Scoyatel and their abettors. Black Rayler sat on a fallen trunk and sharpened her sword. The grinding of stone on blade sounded a grim promise. We got the gold. Them elves will get a beat it. When two dogs fight, the third's sure to get the bone. We got the gold. 
dem ad. Neve arrived at the hut the villagers claimed to be the meeting point for the Squiretel and the Hawkers. Torchlight flickered amidst the trees, and she heard the sound of hushed voices. Your Grace, whispered Rayla. They're in our grasp. We must act quickly if all the elves retreat into the woods. Worry not, Rayla, the Queen said, patting her on the back. I shan't let a chance like this slip. Attack! The Lyrians rushed out of the woods at the unsuspecting elves and merchants. Moments later, the sound of combat filled the dark wood. A scum! Special prize, just for you, love. Coin or sod off. Yeah, yeah. Nay, do one thing came best. Thing about slings, they hide well. Your sword and arm be one. Defidvara! Hey! None shall tread on us! Never have a storm knock out one of your teeth. Oh, 
Oh, my little leg. A scum. I'll fight to my last breath. Show me the coin or sod off. Nice cars? No, they don't hurt. You mad? Don't shake that! This could hurt! Her Majesty knows what she's doing. The chase is on! Got business for me. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Defendvara! Have it the white of an eye from half a league away. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Now we will see who is weak. And just when you thought things were about to get dull. Oh my. Strength, my love. Oh, my little leg. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Toward one.
there's but one penalty for trading with elves. Meave pulled off a rare trick. She laid a trap for the Scoia'tael in their own woods. The surrounded elves fought to the bitter end, choosing death over human captivity. Meave cracked open the hawker's chests and stared at a mass of tangled oakum. Perplexed, she dug deeper and found the real goods hidden underneath. Bolts with entrail pureeing hooks, leg-snapping bear traps, and incurable poisons. Instruments of cruelty, said Reynard, looking over the chest's contents, designed to deliver maximum pain and a prolonged death. Gascon did not share in the general gloom. He reached for one of the arrows and balanced it in his hand with curiosity. A corpse is a corpse. It cares not how it became one. And these marvels... Oh, my lads could do fine things with them. The ends justify the means, Meave said curtly as she grabbed a weapon from one of the chests. Her soldiers followed suit and equipped themselves with hawker arms. Soon enough, the elves would feel the pain they'd hoped to inflict on others.
My scars? No. They don't hurt. One they came Watch your heads! <laughs> Enough chit chat. Draw your weapon. Peace with humans? I buy the ass. serves a purpose. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. Now we will see who is weak! We must trust each other. Thing about slings, they hide well. The chase is on! I shall not fail!
Hey, hey there! Come here! Awaits us all. Fear not. We shall achieve our goal. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? to old one! One they came We'll catch them all. <laughs> the chase is on. Discipline shall bring us victory! You mad? Don't shake that! <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Yeah! 
Your vet will avenge us, Tuan! This could hurt. Ryan! Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Thing about slings, they hide well. Have strength, my love. If my coins rank to ye, go kiss a dog neat its tail. This is Elven Land, Dwan, upon which your kind dies.
Meave was discussing some matter with Gascon when a scout approached. His blood-streaked uniform revealed the matter to be urgent, so the Queen cut short her conversation and requested a report. We were scouting, my lady, and we found a cave entrance. Small scattering of elves guarding it, but we took them right out. Hmm. Gascon scratched his chin. I'd wager ten Novigrad crowns there are more Scoyatels squirreled away inside. We strike before they know we've snuffed out their guards. We might well catch them by surprise. But we must act quickly. Then let us act. Gather some men and prepare them for an attack. But keep quiet. The Lyrians crept into the cave. They moved carefully, noiselessly even, avoiding notice for quite a while. Nevertheless, elven warriors soon came pouring out of a side cavern. to help one or the other. <laughs> this is Elven Land, Dwan, upon which your kind dies. to my last breath. They're not backing down. Must be something of value to them here. I smell a leak. Oh my.
Mm, a little egg. We ought to help one or the other. You mad? Don't say that! Your tricks will not save you, Dwar. Oh, no. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. A little day. <laughs> Thing about slings, they hide well. shall tread on us! of death! Ha! Ha! We will see who is weak. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> we'll catch them all. Shall not fail. Can't take any more. Dole, Black Thana. Oh, my little day. Hey. shall tread on us! <laughs> Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? <laughs> Death!
left toward one! We ought to help one or the other. Wait, you're serious? We must trust each other! They resisted to the very end. When the Lyrians broke the elven ranks, Meave was convinced their foe would retreat and regroup. But to her surprise, the Scoia'tael fought to the bitter end. She concluded there must have been something truly valuable hidden in that cave. As Meave entered the next chamber, her nose caught the stink of blood, pus, and urine. Then she understood. The elves were using the cave as a field hospital. Wounded fighters lay by the cavern walls. They made no attempt to defend themselves, nor to beg, nor to make peace with the gods. They merely watched the Lyrians calmly, with stark contempt. Milady, whispered Rayla. You saw what the Scoia'tael are capable of. What they do to humans, they would have no mercy for... Raynard, usually calm, could not hold back and cut Rayla off. What, pray, do you suggest? That we murder the wounded? The warrior responded in a whisper, slowly emphasizing her words. I suggest you leave. Leave me and my men. We'll take care of the rest. Meave looked the warrior in the eyes and was terrified by what she saw. No, Rayla. We shall not touch them. Do you understand? Rayla was quiet for a long moment. Finally, she nodded and left the cave. Raynard followed her with his gaze, hand on hilt. Raynard, listen to me. You are to keep a close watch on Rayla until we are at least a day's ride from this cave. If she separates from the column, if she tries to double back, I wish to hear about it. Do you understand? Raynard nodded. Despite the day's victory, they left the cave in a somber mood. 